Hi there, this is Jonathan Ginsberg. I'd like to talk to you today about uh, a type of motion that you may see in your Chapter 13 case. And this is called a motion for relief from stay. Um, and sometimes in a Chapter 13, you're going to get this stack of papers that says motion for relief from stay and notice of assignment of hearing. And it's pretty freaky because, you know, all of a sudden you get this paper out of the blue. Uh, what does this mean? And it can mean a number of different things. Let's go through kind of what, what this whole thing is. First of all, let's understand what a motion for relief from stay really is. Uh, when you file bankruptcy, something called the automatic stay goes into effect, and that automatic stay prevents creditors uh, from doing anything, and specifically mortgage creditors from filing uh, foreclosure actions, taking any actions to recover their property. Um, so the stay is what really is the core protection of a bankruptcy, and that's what's really designed to help you save your property. Now, if you decide in your bankruptcy you're going to surrender uh, your house, then in order for the creditor to proceed with foreclosure, uh, what it has to do is ask the judge to lift the bankruptcy protection so that it can begin pursue state court remedies such as foreclosure. Um, so if you're going to surrender your house, uh, the mortgage company will file a motion for relief from stay. Uh, we will generally not oppose it because there's no basis to oppose it. We're not providing to pay uh, the arrearage back in your plan or do anything to protect that creditor. And basically, the, the, uh, we'll do a consent order. Well, we'll agree that they can lift the stay, they can sell the house at foreclosure with the express understanding that if they do foreclose on your property, that they will not pursue any kind of deficiency claim against you. And if there are proceeds beyond the actual payoff in the mortgage, that those proceeds will be remitted to your Chapter 13 trustee for the benefit of your case and your creditors. So that's what happens if you have uh, a motion for relief in a situation where you have agreed to surrender your house. Now, what happens if you are not agreeing to surrender your house? Uh, and you're, you're filing a Chapter 13 to stop a foreclosure and to catch up your missed mortgage payments. Well, generally, if uh, you get a motion for relief from stay early on in the case, it's for a couple of reasons. One is that you may have had an insurance lapse, and if the insurance lapses, the mortgage company uh, may feel that it's not being its interest is not being protected, they file the motion for relief from stay so that you will get insurance on it. Secondly, it may mean that you're not making your payments. Uh, in a Chapter 13 in, in the Northern District of Georgia, you're required to make your ongoing mortgage payments immediately with the first payment that comes due after you file your case. So for example, if you file your case on March 15th and the payments due the first of the month, you got to start making mortgage payments again for April 1st. So April 1 payment needs to be paid. If it's not, the mortgage company file, may file a motion for relief from stay saying that this debtor is not making his post-petition mortgage payments and therefore we want the stay lifted so we can go forward with foreclosure. Um, if you get one of these later on in the case, uh, it could be for a couple of reasons. It could be for a post-petition payment lapse, which again is the same sort of thing uh, where you're missing payments. It could be for an insurance lapse, or it could be if it's pre-confirmation, if it's a couple months in or a month in before the case has been confirmed, the mortgage company may say, well, you're not paying us enough. Uh, you're not curing our rearage fast enough, and you're not catching us up fast enough, and we think that we're not being adequately protected. And a lot of times that can be settled out by simply increasing the payment to the mortgage company. Maybe you, your payment goes up, maybe you just adjust uh, where where the payments go, um, but that would be another reason for the mortgage company to, to do it. By far the most common is a post-petition payment lapse, uh, meaning that your case is filed, you know, four, five, six months go by, you miss two or three payments, and now you're behind post-petition, mortgage company files a motion for relief from stay, and a hearing is scheduled. And generally what happens is we're able to negotiate some sort of a deal with the mortgage company and their attorney where you'll catch up the post-petition payments over the next three to six months um, by maybe doubling up or making a payment and a half, something like that. Sometimes you make one, you know, your regular payment on the first and you make a, a post-petition cure payment on the 15th. Um, regardless, it's going to be difficult. If you're having trouble making the payments ongoing, um, now you've got to make your ongoing payments plus you've got to cure the arrearage. Um, and, and judges will typically give you one shot at that. Uh, judges do not like to see people lose their house, so they will allow you a consent order, although again the terms may be such that as a practical matter it could be impossible or close to impossible for you to, to, to make those payments. Um, so I tell my clients that you know we can do a consent order um, and that would stop the immediate problem, but um, if you can't make the payments then the next step would be the mortgage company will typically do a consent order where if you fall behind again they don't have to they do not have to file another motion they can simply send me a letter saying you got
you've got 10 days to fix this, otherwise the stay gets lifted. So usually the judge will give you one shot at curing the arrearage uh, informally uh, or through a consent order, and then the second time around is the stay is getting lifted. And usually it's not done in argument. So very, very rarely uh, will you actually appear in court before a judge and have to argue that the stay should not be lifted. Usually judges will almost automatically give you one attempt, one good faith effort to cure that arrearage. Um, but if you if you don't fulfill the terms of that consent order um, and then you, you fall behind again within a certain designated period, it could be um, you know six months, it could be a year, it could be longer, uh, depending on the circumstances and what's negotiated, uh, then the stay will be lifted and then uh, the property will be again advertised for foreclosure. doesn't mean you have to leave right away. Uh, what's going to happen is when the stay is lifted, the mortgage company has to start the foreclosure process. Um, that may take two or three months, so you may have as a practical matter two or three months to find another place to live, but if you see that you're not able to make the payments, um, it's best to contact me or contact your attorney sooner rather than later to discuss uh, what the best resolution is, and if you have to simply say we're going to let this house go, uh, you, you're going to probably have again a couple months to find another place to live, but uh, my attitude is don't throw good money after bad, don't try to save a property that's not salvageable, um, there's always other properties, and if you can go through the bankruptcy, you know, clean, it cleans everything up in the sense that you don't owe anything anymore and maybe five or six years from now you get back into a house again. So uh, if you see a motion for relief, it means that there's a problem with your, your mortgage loan, you've fallen behind. Um, usually you're going to know about it. Typically mortgage companies will send letters to, to me as your attorney um, to explain that we've got a problem brewing. So it shouldn't be a surprise, but nevertheless it's still a little bit uh, disconcerting when you get this very formal and, and, uh, and, and very legal looking piece of paper that says a motion for relief from stay and, and you see that the mortgage company is trying to lift the stay so they can uh, go forward with foreclosure. So that is what a motion for relief from stay is in a Chapter 13 case. Hope you don't ever get one, um, but if you do, that's what attorneys like me, that's what we're there to do is to help you buy as much time as you possibly can and to cure any problems with, within reason. As long as you're, you're straight up with me and you let me know what you can afford, uh, we can make all this work for you. So this is Jonathan Ginsburg, and this concludes my discussion of motions for relief from stay in Chapter 13 cases.